300,000 subscribers. <laughs> World domination is close. <laughs> the army of New Blitz is growing. And where do I keep my armies? Up my sleeve is. <laughs> Hi guys, Steve here, and we did it, 300,000 subscribers. Thank you very much for everyone who subbed and helped support my channel. I couldn't have done it without you guys. So thank you very much for all your support. Welcome to all the new people who have joined. That was really quick getting from quarter of a million to 300,000. There we go, that's my channel analytics. And I noticed we reached 300,000 subscribers. The channel keeps growing, so thank you every single one of you for your support. All of you have watched my videos, commented on them, liked, subscribed, and shared them with your friends. It really means a lot to me, so thank you so much. And a very special thank you to everyone who's donated and who became a patron. That support's especially appreciated. And to celebrate, I'm going to give you a sneak peek behind the scenes. Now, I keep getting asked, what kind of system do I have to run ARC? So I thought I'd do one better and show you my entire setup. This is where I spend most of my life, day and night, making videos. And it's also my streaming computer. My desk's really deep because I got it for a CRT monitor years ago. And that thing was fairly huge and went back about two feet. I've cleared it up a lot for you because it's usually covered in papers and junk. This is my computer case which is years old and a bit dusty. It's a Corsair Graphite 780T, full tower in white. From all the different angles I think it's the closest one that looks like a Lamborghini. Plus it's got a BMW start button to boot it up. Yes, not the best bedspread. Now most of us will automatically go for black PC cases. They usually end up being a dark ominous box underneath your desk. But I've got white walls and I thought, will a white case brighten up the room and make it seem lighter? So I took a risk and got a white one and it actually works. It does kind of camouflage it against the wall and brighten up the room. That's the only RGB my computer's got. If you're a YouTuber, you don't want a computer with RGB if you have bad internet. Because if you've got 3 meg upload, it's going to take you all night to upload a video. And the disco lights in your bedroom are going to keep you up all night. That's why I should get a computer as quiet as possible as well, so you're able to get some sleep. The only thing I don't like about this case is it lets a lot of dust in. I've not cleaned it for a while to show you what I mean. And yes, the cable management could be better. I've got an 8TB hard drive for video, and a 12TB when that one filled up. But I'll go more into that after I've done the other components. The system's fairly old now and struggling, so I'm hoping to get the next gen AMD system. As more processors help you render 3D, video editing and streaming. My computer's old now, so apart from a 2080 Ti, take these as minimum requirements. As you'll be able to find newer, better parts. My motherboard is an Asus X99 Deluxe. It's been okay apart from your onboard sound crackling, and its USB ports playing up for a few years after coming out. The CPU is an Intel i7-5820K, 6 core 12 threads, and it runs at 3.3 GHz. I've not overclocked it as I damaged my last computer, but this one does struggle when I'm streaming, but you can just about get away with doing everything you want to. For RAM I have 32 gig of Corsair Vengeance, 2400 MHz. The power supply is a Corsair HX1000i, a 1000 watts been able to run everything fine. The CPU cooler is a Corsair H100i, all-in-one water-cooled, two-fan with Corsair links, I can link all the Corsair stuff together. I've got a Samsung Evo 250GB purely for the system hard drive. A 512GB Samsung M.2 to put games on that take ages to load like Ark and Star Citizen. Then two 1TB SSDs to put all the other games on. Then for my graphics card I've got an MSI RTX 2080 Ti Gaming Trio which can play absolutely everything and took over from my Asus 1080 Ti when that broke. And there's all my system parts again. I got it as soon as DDR4 came out but I'm trying to hold off to get a new system because PCI Express 4 is going to come out soon. You'll notice that a computer fits underneath the desk on the right hand side. That's because I altered the desk legs for it to work like that. On the left side you have the legs almost button up to the end of the desk. That's how it was originally on the other side. And on the right the legs screwed in a second set of holes. But I move the legs to the left so the computer can sit underneath the desk. And to do that I had to cut the end off a wood board. But that gave enough space to move the legs across. I did this for two reasons. First the computer goes back so much that I wouldn't have been able to have it under the desk. Without it sticking out and getting in the way. 
And second, if you have a drink on top of a desk and then knock it over, it won't spill into the computer below. It'll just drip onto the floor. Now let's take a proper look on the desk. It's pretty deep and usually covered in junk. There's a Razer gamepad, which is a complete waste of money. Some cheap speakers I don't use much. My small monitor, which I need to upgrade because I need a bigger one. The keypads I use to play. I don't use a keyboard, I need to type. I'm a mouse and spare headset. I have a mic arm going up above a monitor. It's connected to a blue microphone shock mount, which is huge and overly expensive. That's to stop banging noises when you hit a desk or keyboard. And we have a blue Yeti microphone plugged into that, which gives you really good quality sound for the money. And a pop filter in front of that to help stop p -p -p noises as you speak. You don't really want a microphone on your desk with a stand it comes with because any vibrations to the desk will go through the stand and you'll hear them on your mic. Don't plug your microphone into a USB hub otherwise you'll get static pop sounds when you're recording. This is a mic stand you get with a microphone and I use them as a headset stand. For my mouse I have a Logitech G502. It's got loads of keys and it feels really comfortable. The main downside is the sniper button's too far forward and I can't use it. I have two mouse mats, one for a mouse with a wrist rest, and the other so the desk corner doesn't stick into my forearm. Your main mouse mat will need a wrist rest, because after years of moving your mouse around, the bottom part of your palm next to your wrist will go red and then swell up from a friction of years of use. With a wrist rest you won't get that, and after years my palm finally went back to normal. I got a Razer mouse mat only for its wrist pad. It was a rip off and you could get a mouse for how much it costs. I've got a cheap keyboard because I don't use it to play games, only to chat to people. I got a white one to match my case, but as you can see after years it gets dirty. Yes, I could have cleaned it for this video, but I wanted to show you what state we end up in. My decades old Belkin Nostromo N52, which I use to control my games with and is still better than the Razer version because this device actually works properly. This thing's so much faster and more comfortable than using a keyboard. But I may have found a new best controller with this Azeron keypad. I'm testing it at the moment and I'll do a video on it shortly. When I'm streaming, I use an Elgato Stream Deck. You can customise the buttons for any function you want. Start, stop streaming, any pop-up windows you want. It's very handy as you can customise all the icons to what buttons you need. I've got room for a printer in the corner. My main monitor at the moment is an Asus 24 inch, which is too small. It's 240 hertz, but I don't use that even with a 2080 Ti. 120 hertz would be fine, and you only make videos in 60 hertz. BenQ sent me a screen bar plus, which is a USB desk lamp that I'm reviewing at the moment. It's quite handy as I seem to be using it every night. And that's a view I have every day with my 100,000 subscriber plaque in the background. I've got three newer keyboards in this one, but I just always keep going back to this. When I'm streaming, I have a game on the main monitor in front, and a second monitor at the side to monitor Streamlabs OBS at the top, Twitch chat in the middle, and YouTube live chat and the numbers down the bottom. These monitors are too small and I'm hoping to upgrade soon. The main monitor is 24 inches, and I think my second monitor is 22 and a half which is way too small, really irritating because I can't open the chat windows very much. And as a result, you miss some people's comments. Your main monitor needs to be around 27 to 32 inches with high refresh rate and good colors. Your second monitor for all your windows, I'd say around the same size, 27 to 32 inches, but that could be a lower refresh rate as you're just reading text, but it needs to be an IPS panel so you can see the text from any direction. I have a second monitor on the monitor arm, so I can move it out of the way when I'm not using it. Make sure you get one strong enough to lift the size of your monitor, and that all of its joints are tightened up, because if they're not, the monitor will just flop down to the desk. I like it on the arm, because once you're done streaming, you can just push it back against the wall, and it frees up loads of space on your desk, so it's not in your face all the time. When you're starting off YouTube and with no money, try and add one item at a time. The good graphics card is the most important, then a good mic for the sound, a bigger hard drive to store more videos on, and keep adding until you get to where you want. I'm at a stage where I need new monitors, and then when the next gen AMD comes out, I'm going to upgrade my computer to that, as this 6 core 12 thread Intel is struggling to do everything I need now. So if there's any monitor or computer companies want to sponsor me, I'll be up for that. Just get in contact with me and I'll be happy to review them for you. 
And that's my setup. I hope it's been informative and gave you all some ideas of what to do and not to do. And thank you again for all your support and getting me to 300,000 subscribers. I'm working on my merchandise store now, so you should be able to buy New Blitz t-shirts and hoodies soon. And if you'd like to become a patron and have all the New Blitz superpowers that comes with it, you can join me on Patreon or Subscribestar. Then you get to chat to me on Discord when I'm not busy, or play on my patron servers if you're in the right tier. Thank you all again, and next time it'll be 400,000, then half a million. Goodbye, and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already.